Hello and welcome to this quick cloud stack demo. My name is Michael with midnetworks.com. And in this video, we will go over cloud stacks, main features and benefits to help you understand what makes it so powerful and in demand in the market today. When we think of reducing IT complexity, cost and time, we think of the cloud. With cloud stack, you are given all the tools necessary to help you deploy your project without worrying about software, hardware, and IT resources. CloudStack orchestrates all the necessary resources for you so you can start deploying your cloud servers instantly with required computing power, storage capacity, and networking services, all done from within one web portal and without being locked to vendor-specific requirements. To help understand this better, I'm going to log in to my CloudStack client account and let's start by looking at my cloud portal or my virtual data center. You see that I have a number of virtual machines currently running. I have a number of private networks setting behind a virtual firewall, a number of consumed public IP addresses, and the latest events related to my cloud account. So let's take a look at the Instances tab. This is where the majority of time will be spent when working with virtual machines. I have a couple of Linux and Windows machines currently running. You can tell that from their status. To deploy VMs, it's quite simple. Just click on the Add Instance button on the top right corner and follow the instance wizard. So let's start by selecting a zone. Currently, we have it configured as Toronto. How you want to deploy the operating system for your VM via template or ISO. So you can use the template option and select one of the pre-configured Windows and Linux images, or you have the option to install your operating system from your own ISO image. In our case, I will select template option. From templates, I will select Ubuntu server. Next, I have to configure instance compute properties. Based on what you need, you will select the appropriate CPU size and memory. I'm going to go with medium instance. Now this is an optional step to add additional disks to my VM. By default, each instance deployed from templates comes with a 50 gigabyte disk, so I'm going to skip this step. Here's another optional step. If you have affinity groups configured, you can control where the VMs will be running. Since I have none configured, I'm going to skip this step. Now I will need to select a network. I'll select private if I want to put it behind a firewall or use a public network if I have the VM on the public network without firewall. In our case, I'm going to deploy my VM on the private network, so I'll keep the default option. Finally, I will give my VM a name, review options, and click on launch VM to deploy. Okay, now our VM is deployed. I'm going to save the generated root password so we can log into the machine later. Then let's check this new instance. You see under the details tab, you have control options. Most of them are self-explanatory. Stop icon to stop the VM, reboot to reboot, take snapshot of your VM. With this, you can take a one-time snapshot so you can revert back to it if you need to. I'll discuss this later on. Uh, when we talk about storage volumes. Destroy instance, that's if you want to delete your VM. Attach an ISO media if you've uploaded it to your cloud account. Reset root or administrator password if you need to. Change service offering, that's if you want to upgrade or downgrade your VM compute size. Full console access to your machine with basic controls. Reset VM option, you can use this to revert the VM settings back to the original state when you first deployed. So you can use this if you want to start the VM fresh without the need to delete and redeploy it again. Underneath, you can view attached volumes. In this instance, currently, I have only the root volume. View snapshots if you've taken any, and finally, view affinity groups if you have it configured. Now. Let's look at the NICs tab. You see, I have one NIC on this machine. If I've added more NICs, they're going to be displayed here. And as you can see, here all the details for the default NIC one are displayed. Network name, IP address, gateway, and other details. On the statistics tab, you can view basic information about the VM. Now, 
let's switch gears a little bit and talk about other options such as storage. Here you can add storage volumes to any of your virtual machines at any point in time. Let's say you need additional disk volume added to your VM. It's pretty simple. Just click on add volume and let's call it disk backup. Pick a zone and select size, then click OK. Now the disk has been created. All we have to do is attach it to our VM that we just created. So let's click on the disk, then click on attach disk. Select the VM you want to attach this disk to, then click OK. Now this disk will appear in the operating system. If I go back to my VM now and look under volumes, you see my disk backup is available and ready to be used. If you no longer want this disk, I can click on deattach and this will deattach it from the VM. Then I can go and attach it to another VM. This is if you want to transfer data between VMs. You can also download the volume to your PC if you'd like to make a backup. You can also resize the disk when you need it. You can expand the disk or shrink it. Storage volumes can also serve as backups of your environment. You can take a snapshot of your VM, which will create a copy, which you can use to quickly recover your data when you need it. You can take a one-time snapshot of your VM or set up recurring snapshot where you can specify when and what time to take these snapshots and how long you want to keep them for. This way you can keep a history of your environment and roll back to it at any given time. At this point in time, let's assume you have built and configured your VM and you're happy with it, but now you want to deploy more VMs, maybe with the same or smaller configuration. You can certainly spend time deploying a new VM, configuring its settings, or you can snapshot the root volume of the existing VM, then convert it to a template, then use that to build other machines. This way, you can quickly roll out your VMs with little time and little effort. I already created a template for one of my Windows machines, so if I go under Templates, you see that it's visible. Now if I go back and click on the Instances tab, click Add Instances, select Template, then click on My Templates, you see that it's visible. All I have to do is complete this wizard to create my machine. Now, we've covered Instances, Storage, and Templates. Let's move into the Network tab and check out what we can do here. Networking can be pretty tricky and complex when you get to configure switches, routers, and firewalls, but with CloudStack, it's really quite simple. Now you can set up basic or complex networks easily. You can also configure firewall, port forwarding, and load balancing rules with just a few clicks. In my cloud account, you can see two networks. Public IP network, which is a shared network. This network is used when you want to deploy VMs on a public network. Private VM network, on the other hand, is a private isolated network. If you need to create additional isolated networks like it, click on Add Isolated Network, fill in the required details, and add it to your account. Since we already have one set up, let's take a look at what we can do inside this isolated network. You see from the Details tab, I can change the name of this network, restart it, and delete it. From the egress rules, I can configure traffic that's going outside. By default, all traffic is allowed. If I click on View IP Address, you will see the current configured source NAT IP. I can assign an additional public IP by clicking on Acquire New IP. If I click on Source NAT IP and look under the Details tab, you see that I can configure VPN access to this network. And with the Configuration tab, you see that I can control incoming traffic to my network via a dedicated firewall that comes with my cloud account. I can set up port forwarding for incoming traffic to my virtual machines. I can also configure load balancing for services between my VMs. Now, let's go back. This time, I'm going to show you how to create a virtual private cloud, VPC for short, which is a virtual network that is dedicated for your cloud account. This is used if you want to create a multi-tiered network. Let me show you what this means. I'm going to click on Add VPC. Let's give it a name description, zone, and superseder. 
which is an IP address that should be large enough to cover all different subnets that you want to create. So each subnet that you're going to create will take a smaller subnet from that superseder block. I will add 10.0.0.0 slash 16. This should give us about 256 class C networks to work with. Add DNS, then click OK. Now the VPC is created, let's create tiers with it. I will add one for LAN network, so I'll give it a name, gateway and net mask. Now I will create another segment, this time I will call it DMZ and follow the same steps. Now, you see how easy it is to create different segments? All that I have to do when I create my instances is to assign them to the appropriate networks. VPC also allows us to assign additional public IP addresses, control traffic to those segments or tiers, and we can also set up a site-to-site -site VPN connection if you want to connect this VPC to your corporate or home network. So that was a quick look at how to build your environment in the cloud using CloudStack to provision virtual machines, uh, managing virtual disks, and finally, how to configure basic and advanced virtual networks. I hope you found this informative. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.